if the confirmatory runs show that we have been able to attain the target response quality then the design objective is met but in case the target response quality has not been achieved then the third stage of tolerance design becomes very significant tolerance design focuses on determining tighter tolerances around the optimal settings identified for the factor levels the control factor levels to make the design robust where the sensitivity to noise and variance is extremely low that's great but how is this achieved since the target response quality is not achieved we transfer the variance in response to the control factors or excess as it is easier to manage or control the excess the relation of y with x is defined by the function fx when we transfer the variance to excess with a view to control them we end up creating tighter tolerances or specifications for excess now this also helps to identify which design or which design level is more robust for a given variability in x like in this figure we see that the design a uh, based on y equals fx relation leads to higher variation in y as compared to the design b in case of design b we can see the corresponding variance in y is much less so for the same variability in x design level b will uh, result in a robust y in practice for this tolerance design to work we should be able to compute the model variance or the variance in y which can be then transferred to excess to create the tighter tolerances this model variance can be computed by the partial derivatives method and this method is especially useful when we are dealing with complex non linear function of variables with, with higher order it's based on the taylor series uh, expansion it says that if uh, y is a function of x1 to xn then the model variance in y is the sum of the variances of individual components or variables it is shown as the summation of square of first order partial derivatives of standard deviation for x in case you are interested to understand how this equation is uh, derived check out the short video on taylor series the link is provided in the description so once we calculate this model variance or sigma y it is then used statistically to recalculate the tolerances for x the other method is the monte carlo simulation where one can use the transfer function y equals f x1 to xn along with the variability in x to uh, simulate the sigma y or the model variance in a simulator like uh, crystal ball so we understood that tolerance design becomes applicable when we are not able to achieve the target response quality during the parameter design we calculate the overall model variance on y and then use it to transfer the variance to x or the controllable factors let's take an example to understand this let's say the ideal function or the transfer function is given by y equals 10 plus 2x now specification on y is defined always it comes from the customer in this case let us say the upper spec is 100 and the lower spec is 50 the upper spec uh, is also called usl or upper specification limit this is lower specification limit lsl we can substitute the value of y in this equation and uh, find the corresponding value of x so if we substitute y equals 100 upper limit for x will be 100 minus 10 by 2 that is 90 by 2 equals 45 similarly the lower limit of x will be uh, 20 corresponding to y equals 50 so y equals 50 corresponding x value becomes 20 for the upper spec 100 the corresponding 
x value becomes 45. Let's assume the model variance at 3. Now in a process, whenever we measure any characteristic, there is an associated measurement system variance. Since we are going to calculate a tighter tolerance in this case, we must account for any such measurement system variance. Let's say in this case it's 2. So the total variance is always given by the sum of variance in individual components. And in this case the components are the model variance and the measurement system variance. So it will be 3 square plus 2 square equals 13. Now this is variance. Standard deviation is square root of variance. So it becomes root of 13 which is 3.6. Normally in statistical tolerancing a buffer of 3 sigma which is equivalent to 99.73% of data within the upper and lower limits is taken at both USL and LSL. So first we tighten the tolerance at Y. So the upper spec of 100 will be reduced to tighten the tolerance and it will be uh, 100 minus 3 times the total standard deviation which is 3.6 and it will become 89.2. Similarly, we will increase the lower spec to tighten the tolerance and it will become 60.8. Now the corresponding value for x will be derived by substituting these new values for y into the ideal function x equals y minus 10 by 2. So we get 39.6 and 25.4 as the new tighter tolerances for x. So for y, the new upper spec is 89.2, the lower spec is 60.8 and the corresponding values for x uh, would be uh, for 89.2 it will be 39.6 and for 60.8 it will be 25.4. So for x these are the tighter tolerances that is 39.6 to 25.4 in comparison to the earlier 45 to 20. So if we control the x within this tighter tolerance y will be robust. This is how the tolerance design works.